Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. Can anybody hear me? If you can, please uh, give me some reactions. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'll jump in right away. Uh, well, before that, I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Nadia, and I'm from the Sc uh, School of Mathematical Sciences, USM, the main campus. Uh, so today, we're going to cover uh, eLearn at USM. Uh, two parts, grading assignments and quizzes. So quizzes, we're going to cover the manual grading part of quizzes. So um, I will share my, some ideas that I have, uh, some, experimenting, uh, some experiments that I have done in setting up assignments and grading them. And number two, uh, setting up quizzes and grading them. So number one and number two, we're going to learn some tools for setting up and uh, for the grading part. And number three, I'm just going to share uh, how I mix, how I mix up the tools according to my uh, assignments and tests. Okay, so I hope uh, we'll be able to cover all of this. So we start with uh, assignments. So how do we set up uh, assignments? So let's go to our e-learn. So I have logged in to my e-learn. If you want to do it together with me, please uh, log into your e-learn. So this is uh, my class for this semester. I'm not going to... Uh, do all the stuff here because uh, this semester I'm sharing with my other uh, colleague. So I'm going to go to last semester's uh, e-learn so here. We can go up here to course archive and pick any anyone that we want to make. Uh, we want to do the test, the testings. Uh, so my recommendation is uh, for last academic session because we know that for every academic session, eLearn will perform some upgrades. So the, the last one is the ones that are very close to the one that we have this semester. Okay, so I'll just pick up one of my class. And don't forget to turn editing on. Scroll down. So this is my experiment uh, last night. So I'm going to add another week. So I'll just write this CDAE webinar version 2. because uh, later on we can just hide this from the student. Okay, so if you do like one new, one new section. So I'm, I'm doing this very slow uh, for, the, uh, for those who want to follow me, you can, you can start uh, creating the section. Okay, so usually when we want to add an assignment, we want to set up an assignment, we just go to the plus icon here, add an activity or resource, click that. And then uh, if you don't have the start uh, activity or resource here, 
uh, usually you would be put here under all. So I would uh, star the activity and resource that I would use so that uh, along the semester, uh, the activity or resource will just be available in this section. So I don't have to go to all here and scroll and search for uh, the one that I need. Okay, so you can go to assignment and click the star icon. So add assignment. So usually we would design our assignment before, like in maybe uh, OneNote or on a piece of paper or in Microsoft Word, right? So here is just transferring the information. So we would have our assignment somewhere else for reference, and then we'll just um, type in the, the assessment name, for example, assignment one. So my style is like this. I like to put in parentheses and put the learning outcome that I will be measuring under this assessment. So say we are measuring CLO1 and percent uh, and CLO2, for example, 5% like that. So that's just my preference. So there are two ways of adding the questions. One is directly under the description here. Uh, another is under the additional files. So usually if we already have our PDF file that's already been vetted by our colleagues on the assignment, we would just add the file here for the instruction and everything. But you can also um, add the instructions and the questions and also rubric in the description here. So I'm just gonna make up some, some uh, questions. For example, answer all questions. Maybe we wanna bold the, the all. And then if you think that this is, the place is too small for you, you can uh, click the arrow button to show everything, every icon here, and click the last part this, to make it full screen. So you can write whatever you want uh, in on a bigger canvas. Okay, answer all questions. Uh, use star, okay. So let me repeat the star part. So let's go back to, I'm gonna stop. Close this. And I'm gonna save and return to course. So we have our assignment here. Uh, so we can go to add an activity or resource. Click this. And then you would be here under all. So assignment is the first uh, activity. And then just click star. Okay, you're welcome. So we go back to our assignment, edit, and then edit settings. So I'm going to click the arrow button and then make it full screen. So I'm just gonna make up some questions. So all questions and we can use all the nice tools here. We have all the, the headings and the bold, the italic, the color. And the number, so I'm gonna add the numbers. Uh, question number one would be give the definition. So this is my question. Number two, find all relative extrema or so because I'm from uh, School of Mathematics, I I have a lot of equations, so we can add equation from up here. Uh, here we have equation editor, but here you have to know the text coding, the latex. 
here I have my function fx equals to square root of x. Save equation. Okay, so that's my my second question. And my third question is state the natural domain of the following graph. I just want to show you what we can do here because this is so rich. So we have here, we have the pencil icon sketch. We can sketch right away uh, on this canvas here. We click that. I'm gonna I'm gonna choose the maybe a straight line for the axis. straight line like that and then just sketch my graph um, okay so this is natural domain so maybe i want to do some asymptotes in here maybe this is my graph So I'm going to have to label um, this part right here. This is going to be X. X. X equals two, for example. Okay. I'm not going to bother making it beautiful i just want to show you that we can sketch we can use the sketch function it's my eraser Sorry, where can I can uh, save the thing? Can you find a place to save the sketch? not quite user friendly huh okay, i'm gonna close this okay so never mind i'm gonna try again this catch something where can we save it oh down here insert insert sketch okay so there we go we have our sketch so if we want to edit our sketch we can double click uh we can Click the pencil icon again and then edit our sketch. Back to sketch again. Okay, so like that. Then down here, insert sketch. There we go. Okay, and then we can. Uh, Exit the full screen, and we have our question in the description. But if we don't want to do this, we can just go ahead and add the file that we have prepared in Microsoft Word and then save as PDF in here. Okay, so that's for the instruction and questions, and we can also add our rubric here. So I like to use this description sometimes. Because when students have question in the class, they they are not uh, quite sure what question one means. Then I can change the question right away in here, and they will be updated. If we have the file here, 
we have to keep on giving them first version, the second version, right? We tell them that, okay, I have uploaded the, the, the updated version of the file and they have to download the file again. So if, we, if they have the question here, they will be updated uh, in real time. They can see the question right away, the updated question right away. Okay, so we scroll down. Uh, this is the, the standard one, availability. Uh, we can allow submission from uh, the day that we create the assignment, or if we don't want to do that, we can specify the submission date, starting from which date until uh, which date. So this is pretty uh, self-explanatory. Um, cutoff date, this is uh, if you don't want to accept the assignment anymore. If you just put the due date, student will be able to submit and you would know that, uh, well, eLearn would flag that uh, the student, this student uh, have submitted late. But if you don't, if you really don't want to accept any late submission, you can put the cutoff date here. The cutoff date can be different from the due date. And the reminder here is just, well, for you, if you want to be reminded by eLearn, then you can go ahead and add the, the date here. Okay, so usually I would just uh, use the first and the second option. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Dr. Sherry. Okay. okay. Yes, Can I yes. Ask a question? Yeah. Okay. Sure, sure. Friends, I just want to ask uh, when you um, enable the remind me to grade by, uh, how does Elan remind us? They will they send an email to us or how? It's through Elan itself. This is by notification. I have never used this before. Uh, so I see. Okay, okay. But I think I think this is by notification when we when we uh, are logged in. To email, oh, email, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to, uh, yeah, thank you, Dr. Rim Bar Baragash, by email. So we would have email notifications. Okay, thanks, thanks. yeah, thanks. Submission types, submission types. So we have another. We have another question. Is there any button that enable notification from e-learning to email? Because when there are 200 students, it's somewhat little nuisance. Well, you can uncheck. Well, this is a reminder to grade the assignment. So if we, well, if we just click the, uh, check the first and the second option, uh, I don't think we would receive any notification. So submission types, submission types. Um, we have the first one online text. So if we click this, um, whatever that our students write, uh, well, the student will be given a box to write their answer. And yes, so that's the option for the online text. For the file submission, the student can prepare uh, the answer somewhere else and then submit here. So because I am uh, teaching mathematics uh, courses, uh, usually they would have to write down the answer and then scan uh, into one PDF file. So I would check the file submission. If you're a language teacher, you maybe you you are designing an essay question, so maybe you can just check the online text. So you don't have to bother with so many files, you can just uh, take a look at the submission right away in eWord. Okay, so I'm gonna check both so that we can see what happened uh, in our assignment. So if we check the online text, you would have, you can also specify the word limit. Okay, like our SPM, like 350 words. You can enable the limit and yeah, give the word limit. Um, maximum number of uploaded files, usually I would just pick one, but depending on your question, if you ask them to 
provide one PDF and one video file and maybe one analysis, one Excel file. So that depends on your design. Maximum submission size, usually I would go for the maximum, <laughs> even though this is not healthy for our server. <laughs> but uh, this is to, uh, to, to, to not have any future problem. I, I usually uh, was very considerate on the server, <laughs> on our servers, so I would put like 1 MB, but then they, that will get back to me later when students have problems submitting their files. And then accepted file types, I would usually, uh, I usually chose the PDF, only PDF. I would scroll down to the documents. Documents is the first, uh, the, this document files, expand, and then just check just the PDF. But again, depending on your design. Save changes, so I would have PDF there. Moving on, feedback types. I'm gonna hold this until the grading part. Okay, so I'm gonna, just gonna go with whatever the default setting is. Submission setting. So the first option, this is if you want to give students the opportunity to submit the draft first, the draft of the answer, and then keep on editing their uh, answer until they are satisfied, they can click the submit button. So this is the one that you should uh, put yes. If not, then they, once they sub, they upload the file, they are automatically, uh, they automatically submit the assignment. So I usually take this as a yes. And then require that students accept the submission statement. Usually I would also put this yes also, like a two layers of confirmation. If not, then if you put this no, then they would just, once they are satisfied, they can just click submit and that's it. But this is like uh, another layer, like, are you sure you want to submit? So, yeah, so I would usually put both yes. And additional attempts, this depends on the nature of the assignment. If the assignment is formative assignment, it's not for grading, then I would, I would do automatic, maybe automatically until pass like that. But if this is like for strict uh, assessment, the uh, summative assessment, then uh, no additional attempts. Group submission setting. This is if, if you want the student uh, submitting in, in group. So we should put yes, and then we have to uh, create the group. Okay, so if it's an individual assessment, then no. Notification. Oh, this is the, the notification part, Dr. Nabiha, maybe. So if, if the, the default is no. So whenever a student submit, uh, submit a file, if you want the notification, you can click yes. If not, then you can just choose no. So this is for the notification part pretty self-explanatory and then moving on to grade so grade we have uh, none this is maybe for formative assessment scale maybe for formative and then we have point point is for summative assessment that's going to be um, uh, calculated for their grades for their overall uh, gpa so we can put the maximum grade so, for example, I usually put the maximum grade uh, the same as my, my, my percentage up here. It's going to be 15%, so I would put 15. But we can adjust this. Maybe we want the assignment to the total is 100, and then we want to... Um, we want to convert to the 15% skill, and that's fine too. The grading method, I'm going to cover this uh, later under the grading part. 
But as of now, we'll stick with the default setting, simple direct rating. And then category, that's if we did something to our grade book, the grades. So if we put like assignments, right? In the beginning of semester, we have categorized our assessment under maybe assignment and test. So we can choose the category. Um, usually, uh, maybe the past, uh, last two years I did that, but for the past like one, two years, I, I would just leave everything under uncategorized. And then I have never used this, but I know that, yeah, this is for uh, anonymous submission, pretty self-explanatory. If you want to know more about it, you can click on the question mark symbol. And this is, I'm, I'm in interested to explore this, so I would explore this this semester. And if uh, something good come from here, I would maybe share my experience using this later. So the workflow, meaning that uh, if we have like two tutors for our class and we want one tutor to grade question one, and then uh, another tutor grade question two, and we will grade question three. So I think that we can set the set it up here. Not not sure yet. <clears throat> Common module setting if you have this in uh, group mode, and then restrict access if you don't want. If you if you want to restrict some student, you can put a restriction here. Activity completion. Usually I would choose show activity as complete and then student must submit for this activity to complete it, to be marked complete. And then tags, uh, well, if you, if you want to do that, if you want to tag your assignment and competencies, this is for like formative assessment. Okay, so that's it, save and display. So if you do, if you insert the description, uh, the question and instruction in the description, uh, it will appear like this. So that's all, that's how we set our assignment. So I'm going to show you one example of my assignment for this class. I have assignment two here. And this is a group assignment. So first I have to let the student choose their group. And then this is the assignment. Assignment, uh, this I just upload the, the file. So it will appear like this instead of the instruction in the description. I just upload here because I used, uh, I sent this assignment for vetting. So this is a vetted uh, assignment. Okay, so if you're interested to know how this look uh, from the student perspective, you can go up to your name uh, on the top right corner, click that, and then switch role. Switch role to student. So you can see that, okay, since this is a group submission, I'm not uh, a member of any group, I can't submit. So let's take a look at this assignment. I'm gonna switch my role here to the student. Oh, okay, this is already st student. Okay, so student would see the instruction. And student would see, uh, can add the submission here and can also click there, add submission. So since we check the online text, the, this box will be available. So the student can enter the answer. This is my answer. And we also check the file submission. Student can um, insert the file. 
safe changes. Okay, so this is the one that we said before. This is still draft. So maybe uh, in the remaining six days and 13 hours, if the student feel like they want to update uh, their submission, they can go back and edit their answer and then uh, click here, edit submission or remove submission and do whatever they want until they are sure and they can submit the assignment. And still, we have like one layer of confirmation here. So I like this because uh, here we have the this statement, right? They have to check that this submission is my work, except where I have acknowledged. I'm not sure, but I have read somewhere, like if we add this in, in one layer of the submission of student, we would reduce a percentage of plagiarism. Because some, some ethical student, when they want to check this, they would think that, okay, okay if they, they copy uh, the work from somebody, they would be lying here. So, yeah. So, yeah, continue. So that will be submitted for grading. That's it. That's for the setting up assignment. You can go back to uh, CDAE webinar version two. So this is the assignment. I'm going to change back my role to myself, return to my normal role. Any question on the setting up assignment? Okay, moving on to the reading of the assignment. We can go back to go up here turn editing on and go back to assignment uh, one way to quickly go to the assignment is go to the top uh, left corner you have the three lines here click that and then you can go to the section that you want to go cdae webinar version 2 that's my section so we can automatically be in that session Instead of like scrolling down, imagine we have, we want to set the assignment in week 14, then we have to scroll down to the 14th week. Okay, so I'm gonna take a look at uh, the, the grading part. Okay, so let's do edit setting. So usually I would post the assignment first without knowing how I would create the, the assignment. Uh, but if you, if you can, then you can just design everything uh, completely before posting in eLearn. And depending on my, my, my resource at the time of grading, I will adjust my grading at that time. So we would scroll to the feedback, feedback types. Feedback types is how we want to give feedback to our student. So the default is feedback comments. But if you don't want to have feedback comments, we can uncheck this. We don't have any feedback types, anything here. So let's save and display. Let's take a look at uh, how to grade. So scroll down and then we have the option to grade the submission, grade. So of course we cannot see any file or uh, anything here. So if we don't check any, any option to give feedback, we won't be having the place to give the feedback, just the place to give the grade, to enter the grade. So for example, this student, I would uh, just give, give him like 10. So this is good for like an in-class assignment, right? You, you have a small class and you want to do uh, a quick assignment or activity. 
and you want to give them a grade right away without submission or anything. So you can uh, do this thing, okay, without the feedback. You, you just give feedback in the class, oral feedback right away. So you can also change uh, the submission, no need, the, no need to submit the file or anything. Okay, so let's go back to the setting. Leave. Setting. Edit settings. Go back to the submission type. So you don't want them to submit anything. So just uncheck both options. So, so it's nothing. It's just for you to record the grid. Okay. So yeah, that's that's one one way of doing that. But if you enable the student to submit file, when the student submit a file, automatically a comment uh, a section for you to insert comment will be added. So I can't uh, this I cannot. Uh, demonstrate here because nobody has submitted uh, my assignment yet. So let me do. Let me go go to my assignment before with the assignment assignment two here. My past assignment. So click that. Then go to the read. Whenever a student submitted uh, some files, automatically we will be given the comment section here where we can add some comments. Okay, so that's that's option number one. I'm just giving you the uh, different options. So this will not be available. This, if we check the feedback comments, this box will be available along with the grid. Go back to assignment that I've created. Edit settings. So feedback types number one is feedback comments. If we check this, then we will be given a box called a field called feedback comments where we can put our comments. Okay, scroll down, save and display. Then scroll down. You can click the read here. So, yep, we have the feedback. So we can maybe give feedback according to question number. Question number one, very nice, full mark. Question number two, uh, Number two, the well, your answer is partially right, and so on. Question number three, whatever. Okay, and then add the grade here, say 10 over 15. And then when we want to save the, the grade, we have the option to notify the student or not. So usually I would not notify the student. I would finish all the grading and then maybe we, we have to go back and forth between our uh, comments. Sometimes we, we, we want to change our marks. So we, after finalize everything, then I would not notify the students in class. So safe changes. So the grade is safe. <clears throat> so you can do usually uh, e-learn would uh, arrange the student from student number one until 21 so you can just after grading one you can just click save and show next and next and next So that's option number one. I'm going to go to the gear icon here. 
go up here, we have the gear icon, edit settings, click that. Let's take a look at another option. Well, let me, let me show you uh, an example of, of my, my assignment. Okay. I'll open this in a new tab. So last semester I did all my assessments in the quiz portal. to go there because I want to use the online proctor option and I want to use the grade book so I put all my uh, coursework and exam work here let's take a look at my assignment number two assignment number two and I want to grade So I have the file was submitted in uh, the content portal, e-learn portal, because at that time, the exam portal uh, cannot handle group submission. So, yeah, so that's why I had to ask my student to, to submit in e-learn, and then I would grade uh, here. I would open the file and grade here. So I graded according to the learning outcome. So, CLO2, we have 5%, CLO3, another uh, 5%. So the total is 10. Okay, so yeah. That's feedback. Feedback, comments. Oh, sorry. This is. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is for the guideline. My bad. Let me close this. MAA111. So I have to go back to my last academic session. Course Archive um, 2020, I think. 2020. MAA111. Assignment 2. <clears throat> Great. Yeah, this is it. Okay. No, this is this, the example for the first one, the insert comments and mark. We have the comments and we have the marks. And then for the second option, the feedback comments to go to MSS381, this minor project. Minor project report. So this is using the feedback comments. Read. Yes, there. So I graded according to question number, question one, question two, question three. And have the the total here. Okay, so that's feedback comments. Going back to our setting, let's go to another option of giving feedbacks. Offline grading worksheet. Let's check that and let's see what happened. Save and display. So whenever we check that option, we can download a worksheet and then edit the marks in the worksheet and then upload the worksheet back. Okay, so how to do that? We can go to view all submissions. I have all submission. On the top part, we have the grading action here. We have to choose download grading worksheet. Choose that. So the worksheet will be automatically downloaded. You can open the file.
So we have a list of uh, student names and everything in here. So we are we will be able to change the grade part, this column. Okay, I'm gonna make it larger. Okay, so this part. So I have graded the first student. So it's already been filled in. So you can go the submission one by one. You can download all submissions. How to download all submission? Go back to um, eLearn. Oh. Okay, we don't have the option to download all submission yet because we haven't choose uh, we we didn't choose uh, the option yet. So yeah, this is for worksheet first. Okay, so you have to open the submission here one by one and then go to the Excel file and then kick in the marks. Okay, kick in five, four. I'm just gonna this is over over 15, right? So I'm just gonna do some random number. Uh, from zero to fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. So save this. Control S. Uh, remember the file name. Close the file. And then in the table here, you can go back to the grading action. Click upload grading worksheet. Okay, so you'll be able to drag and drop the files here. I'll just choose my file under my download folder. So this uh, Excel file that I have updated with the marks before, open. You don't have, well, if you want to be thorough, you can save as some names in here. So I'll just usually click upload this file. Upload grading worksheet. And Elon would say that we, we want to set grade for all these, these students. So we we'll say yes, confirm, and continue. There we go. We have all the, the marks already filled in our assignment. Okay, so that's for offline grading worksheet. Next, up to assignment one again. Go to the setting, edit settings, and submission feedback types, feedback files. This is where we can download all the submission from our students. That's why I love to uh, let them to only submit the PDF version without the online text. So I would be able to download everything and then make some annotations like uh, using my iPad or tablet. Make uh, annotations and update back, uh, upload back my feedback in bulk. Okay, so we can use these two together. We have the Excel form to to kick in the marks. We have our files to do the annotations, to perform the annotation. Save and display. Go to view all submission. We don't want to be going to grade. If we do grading right here, we have to grade online one by one. We don't want, we don't want to do that, at least for me. <laughs> I like to do things offline and then uh, upload them again. So view all submissions. And up here, we have the option of download. Uh... Oh, we don't have download all submission maybe because students haven't downloaded them yet 
had, hadn't submitted the submission yet. If not, then we would have the ability to download the submission. So I'll go back to my uh, assignment, real submissions. And AT516, assignment one. I'm a one. View all submission. Here I have all my students up uploading, submitted their file all in PDF. So what I can do is I can go grading action here, download all submission. But, but, but scroll down, scroll down to here. So sometimes uh, this would be checked, this option, the second uh, checkbox here, download submissions in folder. For me, I don't want to download each submission in folder. I want to just download in one big folder and I have all the PDF files in one, in one folder. If you check this, this would be useful if you, you ask the student to submit many files. Then for each, uh, each folder will be created for one student and all their submissions will be, in, will be placed in the folder. Okay, for me, because I just uh, set for this uh, assignment, I only need one file, one PDF file, so I don't want to be checking this option. Okay, so grading action, download all submissions. This will be automatically downloaded in zip file. I have to open the the file here. This is my download folder. So I'm gonna have to extract uh, the folder first because we cannot make annotation in files uh, in zipped files. So I'm going to extract all in this download folder. You can move this to the class folder if you want. So I'll just extract here. Okay, so all my students with their names and everything extracted under a non-zipped folder. Okay, so I can go ahead and double click. Don't change anything. If you want to change, maybe you can make a copy. Control C, Control V, copy, and maybe rename this as graded. So you have one is a raw submission, and one is with you uh, grading their work. So you can open one by one and use your iPad or anything or your PDF to make, make annotation. For example, here, maybe I want to, we'll just test. There be Good job. Um, total marks, 15, right? 15 over 15. So maybe we want to color it as red. Okay, close and then save this. Control S. And close the PDF. So the don't rename or anything the file. Some people they like to rename to make it shorter, but don't. And then we want to zip the file again. Okay, so right click and then time for our break. How can I zip from here? Maybe I have to second. Oh yeah, here, compress to zip file. 
So there we go. We have the zip uh, graded file it's up there. And then we can open our assignment. So I don't want to be uploading my feedback here because I have already uploaded my feedback here. I would go to the assignment tool that I've created here, the one with no submission, right? This is the test part. So I want to upload the feedback file here because they are a set of the same, a set of uh, similar students. So grading action, upload. Uh, Back. Then view all submissions. Upload multiple feedback files in a zip. Okay, choose that. And we can drag and drop the, the file that we have zipped before. This one. Upload this file. Okay, so it's going to take some time and then import feedback files and then confirm zip upload. No changes. Hmm, maybe we have to upload uh, under the same assignment because of the, the details, the, the, the naming. The naming part. So I have to go to my 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 real assignment here, my real assignment, and then upload multiple feedback files in a zip, and then just follow the instruction. Okay, here, choose a file, put the one that I've created, upload this file. Okay, so the naming is unique. That's why we, we cannot change the name or anything. And then import feedback files and everything. I, I don't want to be doing this because I don't want to uh, change the, the one in already in there. Just cancel this, but you can just follow the step here and the feedback file will be available to the students along with their marks okay the mark you can use the worksheet the feedback file you can use the, the option feedback files okay pretty heavy huh okay, so let's take a short break like a Seven minute break. We'll come back at ten thirty five. Shall
Welcome back. I hope you have a good stretch. So please give me some reactions if you can hear me. Because I have a bad experience before in my class, I was talking alone for so long until somebody updated me that you cannot hear me anything. <laughs> Okay, so um, okay, so let's review what we have learned before. Um, we have uh, we, we, if we don't put anything as a feedback type, uh, if the student up upload the PDF file, we can still insert comment in there. We can specifically check the feedback comments option so that we can absolutely leave feedback comments with or without a file submission from students. And then we have offline grading worksheet. We can download the Excel worksheet and then fill in the mark and upload the worksheet. And then we have the feedback files. We can upload the feedback files uh, in bulk and one by one. I forgot to show you the one by one part. Okay, so let's cover this. The in bulk, we have to download all the submissions from students, annotate the annotate the, their submission, don't change any name, anything, and then zip the, the folder and upload again. Okay, what about the one by one option? So the one by one option, we can, uh, so, so let's take a look at our setting again. And scroll down here, make sure the feedback files is there, okay. So I'm going to save and display. We have grade. Okay, grade one by one. We can insert the feedback. We can upload the feedback file one by one. Okay, so that's uh, if you prefer to grade online using the browser. Okay, so moving on. The last option to give feedback is go to the gear icon, the top left, edit settings. Scroll down, we have annotation. We have the ability to annotate the PDF right away on the browser. Okay, so save and display. Again, since I don't have the PDF submission in here, so it will be empty. Here. So if the students submit any PDF, it will be available here, and you can use all the tools in uh, on top here, on the top ribbon here, to insert your comments. You also have the, the one that you checked before, the feedback comments, the feedback files. So if you want to disable any of this, you can. Because you are making annotation here, so you don't have you don't want to be uploading any feedback file. But if you want to give annotation and as well as the feedback files, um, sure, you can have this also. Mm, okay, so I'll I'll show you one example, my class assignment with annotation. In a triple one. Assignment one. Assignment one. Okay, so I have the annotation tool for, so this is just uh, me testing the annotation tool, but maybe I can search for one. Usually I will not annotate anything if they are correct. I will just give full marks. If they are wrong, then I would uh, mark the part that they are wrong. Yeah, this student. Okay, for Nur Fatiha, page four. 
we have some mistake. Page four. Okay, so uh, yeah, the mistake is this. Suddenly she has. Not sure what's the mistake, but yeah. For part E, I have minus 0.5 there. The mark minus 0.5. Okay, so you can annotate right away. But uh, honestly, I I don't have the patience to go like one by one to the browser and then annotate here. It depends on your uh, internet connection and depends on your uh, RAM. I think the computer RAM. Uh, sometimes when you are annotating, it got delayed or uh, it is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. But one good thing about this is, is if you have many tutors, then everybody can annotate at the same place. For example, you have, again, tutor number one wanting to just uh, mark uh, question number one. So automatically, uh, the tutor can annotate here. And the second tutor can also annotate here. And you, we also can annotate here at the same time. If not, then we have to download everything and then share and then share the link to OneDrive folder. And then sometimes you have different versions, right? Sometimes if we annotate at the same time, we have different versions of the file. So it's good if you want to grade together as a team. Team grade, grading in team, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's uh, annotation. And going back to my test assignment, and the last option to give feedback, uh, this is the last uh, option for this uh, row, but we have another option here, comment in line. So if we, um, for our submission, if we put online text, we can ask eLearn to automatically copy the online text into the feedback comments box. Okay, so if we choose yes here, our submission, our student submission will be automatically copied into the feedback comments box. Okay, and then we can like highlight or uh, mark the word with red color or anything. But I've never used this uh, uh, except for one time, a um, long time ago, and <laughs> CDEE has already uh, deleted the record when I taught a programming class. So I asked the student to uh, paste online text here, to paste their coding. And then I would ask eLearn to automatically copy the submission into the feedback comments. And then I would give my uh, comments on their coding, whether the coding is right or wrong. Okay, so that's for comment in line. Done with feedback types. Uh, any, any questions? Moving on to the great uh, part here. Okay, so the, the default is point. Oh, sorry, the, the one that we chose before is point. So for point option, another way of uh, entering the marks quickly is by Save and display, and then go to view all submissions. Scroll down, and then we have your quick grading. The option to quickly give marks here. Okay, so the box will be available for you to edit. Again, if you if you have use for this, uh, if you're use if you're doing uh, in class assessment, you're assessing the psychomotor, you're looking at the students, and then you want to give the grade right away. You can also give like this instead of uh, downloading the worksheet. Insert all the marks, and then 
save. Save or quick grading changes. Or maybe you have given grades and then the student uh, came back to you with complaints and then you want to increase or decrease their marks, you can, also, you can use this option too. So that's number one. Number two is using marking guide. Let's go back to the option. Setting, edit settings. Grade here. We have marking guide down here, but because we have given the we have given the marks, we can't change it anymore. So I'm gonna duplicate this assignment. Going back to my section before. So go to edit, duplicate. So the same exact assignment. Maybe I'll change, I'll change it to assignment two. Okay, all the questions are the same. Let's change the grading setting. Change it to, we still can change the grade because uh, we don't, we haven't given the marks yet. So let's change it to um, sorry, grading method here. Let's change it to marking guide. Okay, and then save and display. Then we have to define our marking guide. Let's see whether we uh, eLearn has the template here. Oh no, okay. So we have to define the marking guide from scratch. So click here. So one, um, one, okay, let's give it a name first. Uh, marking guide for assignment two. So marking guide is that we can um, specify criteria and then give the maximum mark for that criteria. Okay, so usually I would do it uh, either by question or by learning outcome. Okay, the benefit is that, let's say we give this, uh, the question number one, the full mark is 10. So we give nine and then question number two, the full mark is five, we give four marks. For example, eLearn would total them automatically. If we, if we uh, mark ourselves, imagine if we have 10 questions and every time, if we have, if we have 100 students, every time we have to uh, add all the marks ourselves. So here, it uh, enable us to like focus on in one question. Maybe today we want to mark question one. We will fill in all the marks for question one. And then once we are done, eLearn will help us uh, with the total. Well, we can do that in Excel too, but yeah, this is another way of doing that. But uh, the, the one thing that I like about this is that student can know right away uh, what, where they, they did wrong. Okay, so I'm just going to give an example of um, kicking in the, the criteria. So, for example, for my question number one, so we have under click to edit criteria name. So, this is either our CLO or our question. Question one. Description for student is, um, well, if you want, but usually I would just leave these two blank and then just give the maximum score being five like that. Okay, the tricky thing about the maximum score is that when you click on the maximum score, you will not be able to see what you type there. So you have to backspace, delete everything, and then enter your marks, say five, and then click outside the box and then the number will appear. Okay, so that's the tricky part with the maximum score. So description for student, if you want to add, uh, but don't give the answer here because they will be able to see this 
uh, even before, well, de depending on your uh, show guide definition to students. So if we uncheck this, then student will not be able to see description for students. Until we are done with our marking, we check this option back, then student will see the marking scheme. Okay, so description for student, I would just say maybe for question number one, uh, enough definition, uh, well, sufficiently defined. This would be five, five marks. And then partially, well, not five, maybe two. Partially sufficient. Partially sufficiently defined. I'm sure whether that's, that's grammatically, grammatically correct. One and a wrong definition. This is zero. So the maximum score would be three instead of five. Okay, so that's question number one. If you want to add description for markers, maybe you you want to add uh, maybe extra comments here. Extra comments. For example, you say do not give extra whatever whatever you want to uh, tell your tutor. If you are marking alone, then you might might not need to insert a description for students and markers here. And then add another criterion. For question two, then say the mark is mm, my total is ten, so maybe five here. And then question number three, we have two. Let's say our total is different from the one that we put in the setting, okay? To make it juicy. So let's say four here. My total is supposed to be 10, but here the total is nine. So again, if you can uncheck this, if you don't want to show the guide definition to student. Save marking guide and make it ready. Warning, so e will give you a warning that the total is not, uh, is, uh, does not tally with uh, the one that we put in the setting. Uh, the maximum grade set in your activity is 15. The maximum score uh, will be scaled, okay? So uh, eLearn will automatically scale this point uh, to 15 if you want that. If you don't want that, you can go ahead and and edit the current form definition to make it match with the mark. Okay, so I'm going to leave it as it as is. See, so ready to, for use. We can go to assignment two. We can grade. Click grade, and then we have all the the box for question number one, question number two, question number three, and then we even have the extra option here whether to show. Oh no, we cannot. We cannot. Uh, this is automatically put as show student criterion description. We can change even though I uncheck the first, I think. Oh, here we can choose height here. Height marker criterion description, height student criterion descriptions. If we want to hide from the st student. Okay, so just put our marks, so 2.5 and put our comments for each question. This is three, this is one, and then uh, click save changes. 
e-learn will automatically calculate the total and then in my case calculate the total and scale it to over 15. okay so that's very nice this is not my number one grading uh, option my my yeah my my first preference So we can go one by one and then fill in the box as we want. If we have uh, not that many students, say like here, 20. If we have 300 students, then, uh, well, we might want to use other option. Okay, so that's for the marketing guide. After we finish grading all of this, we can export the mark for question one. Maybe question one is um, measuring CLO1. Question two measures CLO2. We want to export the marks according to CLO for our course file. We can do that by going back to our assignment and clicking the gear icon here. And we can export here export marking guide grades so yes that will be saved as uh, an excel file okay so you have mark for question one question two question three if you want to do your clo attainment okay marking guide done Moving on to rubric. Rubric, I'm going to duplicate uh, assignment two and make it assignment three and change. Oh, before that, before that, uh, assignment four. Let me show one example uh, that I use the marking guide. Assignment four. So the students submitted their PDF file, and then I have guide uh, mark for CLO two and CLO three. So this is a group assignment. So the setting is uh, using group. This is group ten. Done. So it's very quiet. I thought that everybody understands. Rubric. So assignment three. You want to go to edit and then edit settings. Scroll down to the, the read um, section and then change the grading method to rubric. And then save and display. Again, we have to define the rubric from scratch. So usually we would have our rubric somewhere else, right? We have designed the rubric already. So name our rubric, rubric for assignment three. So here, this is the part where we can edit the rubric. So I would just uh, use uh, the same question, right? Question one, two, three for the criterion, but you can change accordingly. Question one, for example, wrong. Wrong is zero. When you click at the box, the points box, uh, it will not show you anything. So you can just backspace and delete, press, uh, backspace and delete some, uh, some, uh, a few times and then insert your mark. So this is going to be zero. Partially correct. That's going to be one. Oops, the marks are, are, is automatic already. One. And then two is for correct. 
So that's for question number one. Question number two. So I'm just going to give uh, zero and then two, like that. So I just want to uh, uh, demonstrate that the number of columns doesn't, doesn't have to be the same. So for example, this is uh, wrong and correct, incorrect and correct. So yeah, correct. So I'm going to give two points for correct. So I can just delete this. Yes. So it will only have two uh, options. And for question number three, instead of three, I want to add another. I can do that. Add another level. This is for uh, four points. Zero, two, three, four. Well, zero. One, two, three. So maybe week. Um, where they're the same, huh? Average and good. Okay, so check everything. You're good with everything and you can sort ascending or descending. And, and yep, usually I would just check all these options and then save rubric and make it ready. Okay, so when we click grade, we have the rubric. So maybe I'll, I'll close this annotation option. I'll uncheck the annotation option to be able to see the rubric. Okay, and then save and display. Go back to my grade here. Can okay, go one by one, take a look at one by one the submission and just click for question one, question two, question three. Then you can give comments also. Uh, revise the definitions, for example. You want to give some encouragement to the student. Okay, click everything and uh, eLearn will automatically grade the total for you. Save changes. There we go. We have the total. So the total will be scaled to my, because the total here does not match with my total in my setting. So the total is 2 plus 1, 3. 3 over 2 plus 2, 4. 3 over 7 uh, times 15, I think. The total is 15. This is going to be 6.43. That's rubric. And rubric we'll also, we can export the marks. Same with uh, marking guide. You can go here and then export rubric grades. It will be exported in uh, Excel file. Okay, the score zero, two, and one for each criterion. So one uh, example for my rubric is AA101. Dashboard. And AA11, assignment two. For this semester, I took the second part. 
here. Assignment two, my assignment two is video submission. So I did Panopto video submission assignment. So the, the grading part is the same. I'm using rubric. So when I want to grade, I will be able to see this uh, because I already graded their videos. But if I want to update, I'll click update here. And I will be able to watch a video and then grade accordingly. Okay, so this is my rubric. Uh, this is not me. This is my tutor <laughs> grading this. Okay, so that's for rubric. Any question? Let's go back to the grading option. Edit settings. We go back to the grade. The other option here, uh, like I said, I haven't explored them yet. Only this grade uh, category. I did explore this. Well, the thing is, for example, here, we have the grade book for the student. Reach. I have set up the grade in this uh, course like this. All right, we have assignment and everything. So if we add category here, for example, we want to add uh, category for for um, assignment. So that grade will belong under that assignment will be under that category. Okay, so this is why I like uh, putting in all the marks in eLearn because the student will automatically can see their their grade. The overall grade, for example, uh, let's uh, click the user report and then, for example, uh, Abdul Hadi, Abdul Hadi, so he can see that, oh, this is his mark and his total coursework is A minus. That's why we want to um, insert everything in e-learn okay done with assignment <laughs> let's move on to quiz going back to my CDAE webinar version two. So let's add the quiz. Add quiz. Again, you can choose from all. You have quiz option. Add quiz. And quiz can be test, quiz can be assignment. But um, for clarity, I'm just going to do quiz one. Quiz one. The timing, I think this is, uh, you already know. When time expires, whether you want the attempts to be submitted automatically, or you want to give a grace period to your students, or you don't want to receive uh, any submission if uh, they don't submit it before the, the, the time. Okay, 
and great category, same thing. But for the quiz, uh, the nice part is that we can set the number of attempts. So sometimes I set this like for for my course, I would give like exercise for my student. And then I would give like 10 attempts and I would do automatic. Uh, uh, I would post questions that can be automatically marked so that they can do until they got the full mark. So this is just for formative um, assessment, okay, just for them to practice. But if for tests or for the summative assessment, maybe we have to set it to just one. And the layout, um, well, if you want every page to have only have one question, this, yeah, this depends on your uh, preference. Navigation method, whether the student can go back and forth between question between pages or sequential, meaning that if the student move to the next page, they cannot go backwards. Question behavior, you want to sh if you want to shuffle the question, if you want to defer feedback as um, you want to withhold the feedback until everything is done, I think. Review options, so this I would recommend you uncheck everything. For test or for quiz, you have to uncheck everything. So that the student can only see the the question and their answer. Okay, or if you uh, while when the quiz is closed, everything will be closed, so the student cannot share the the question with their friend. If we open the like here, we can open the quiz all day, and we can give time limit. Let's say half an hour. So the student will have all day to take the quiz. So if that happens, maybe we want to uncheck everything so that whenever the student have submitted the quiz, they will not be, they will, they cannot see anything. Okay, so that's that. And then appearance. Save exam browser, if you want to use that uh, extra restriction, if you want to block anybody from taking a test. Well, yep, that's it. Save and display. Edit quiz. So we can add question as we want from our question bank or a new question. But the one that I'm going to touch today is the grading, the one that we have to grade, right? So we add a new question. So all the questions here, they have to be set so that it will be automatically graded. Only one option, as far as I know, the essay question that has to be manually graded. So let's choose that and then add. So maybe question number one. one. Usually the name I would not put question number one. This is the name for us. So maybe I would put usually the question measure which uh, learning outcome, maybe CLO1, what's the taxonomy? Taxonomy is C2, for example, measuring C2 and the chapter, C chapter two. And then the question ID, say zero one. So that's the question name. So I would put in category, maybe category chapter one in the question bank. Question text is explain what you understand on the concept of relative extrema, for example. And the default marks may be um, three. Okay, so the response format, we can either put HTML editor, students can type right, right away. We can put HTML editor with file picker, 
student can type and also insert a file. Uh, plain text, this is good for coding. So that uh, if HTML, sometimes the symbol will get converted to smiley face. So we want to do plain text for coding. And uh, monospace font. Monospace font. I, I don't know about this. And if we don't want them to uh, be able to write the answer right away, we want them to upload file. We can also do that. No online text. Okay, whichever you want. And do you want to allow attachment? If there is no online text, then you have to allow like one attachment or unlimited. If they, the students can upload photos of their answer. So I'll put uh, the most complicated one. And then require attachment, is it compulsory? The attachment optional. And then you can also specify the file types. And response template. And uh, this, if you want uh, the student to give response um, in the structure that you want. For example, uh, you want the student to write the concept of relative extrema is like that. So the student will continue writing from our template. Greater information, if you want to uh, give, uh, tell the marking scheme here, put the marking scheme, and then save changes. There we go, we have the first question. And then we can add a second question, and the third question, everything. So the total mark here is three, but the maximum grade is 10. Again, you, you can make it match, the, the, the mark can match, but if you don't want to, for example, the percentage is 10. The percentage that it uh, carries, th that this uh, quiz carries with the coursework is 10%. But the total mark here can be like 100. Uh, E-Learn will automatically scale that to 10. Okay, so that's how you create quiz. So let's uh, preview the quiz. Preview quiz. Okay, the student can uh, see the question and then can enter the answer. So the the, the template is already given. So they can just uh, type type their answer here. And if they want to add some additional files, they can put it here. And then since this is a quiz with just one question, you can just click finish attempt okay so uh, the one option html with file picker meaning that student can add an image here insert image and then student can pick a file containing the image of their answer for example mathematics they want to do some calculation they can insert the image in here in the box here Finish attempt. That's it. That's for setting up the essay quiz in the form of essay. So how do we want to grade the essay? We go back to the quiz, quiz one, click quiz one, and then go to the gear icon and then uh, choose manual grading. Since we don't have any submission, we don't have anything to grade because for, uh, for the question with no submission, eLearn will automatically put that zero. But if we want to change the, the, the questions that have been graded automatically, we can click this. So maybe because the quiz is not, not active yet or not closed yet. Oops. 
settings. Maybe let's close the quiz uh, today at 11.20. Save in this way. The quiz has to be closed first. Yeah, okay, so go manual grading. And then show questions that have been graded. Hmm, nothing to this way. Let me go to my other quiz, the one that I did before. This, this one. Can I do manual grading here? Oh, the same. So maybe I'll just show the one that I have. Maybe it has to have at least one submission before we can see the manual grading part. Mm, quiz is NAA 101. S2. My test two is set up as a quiz. So I insert the instruction right away. And I ask them to open their webcam and everything. Let's go to the manual grading. Okay, so I have eight essay questions. Uh, so because this is all been graded, if not, then it, uh, this would appear, the number would appear under two grade. So the okay under two grade, and then you can just click grade all and insert the comments and the marks. Okay, so I provide this to my tutor. So I would uh, assign my tutor to like um, one tutor would. Uh, would start from question number one. Another tutor would start from question number eight. So they would go um, from one would go from bottom and another would go from the top until they finish grading all the questions. So I would give the marking scheme for them to to put like this criteria here. I would provide the tutor and for each submission, they can see the picture and they just uh, fill in the marks one negative 0.5 and then the total. And I would ask them to scale to the, uh, the percentage of the quiz. Okay, so that's for, for uh, grading the essay assignment. We have one comment here. I think close uh, is another interesting tool for creating questions in model, especially for mathematical based questions. It provides auto grading and more importantly, how it appears to the students. It provides multiple answer boxes in one question. I see. Okay. I can, I can explore this. Thank you very much. Okay, that's it. Only for this quiz, uh, I will share you the setting. The setting will be um, the timing is that without the time limit. So open and close at the same time. So synchronous uh, test and. Um, Oh, I have to uh, I have to share the the essay the essay setting edit quiz for example question number one question number one I have the general feedback is the marking scheme I put the marking scheme in the general feedback and then uh, HTML editor with file picker but no attachment 
So the student will have to upload the the answer as a photo in the box, or um, they can write using the tab using the pencil icon. Because I want to make it easy for my tutor when they want to grade the the test, they can just see right away the answer. They don't have to download everything, download every file, and then open file. So they can just uh, look right away at the photo when they are grading. So for the general feedback, this is great because um, go back to test two and then the setting. Once we have done grading, I would go to the setting and I would go to review option. After the quiz is closed, I would check everything including the general feedback, then the student, they can see the marking scheme right away. Can take a look uh, from the point of view of the students. The student, for example, for question number one, this is his answer, this is the marking scheme, and this is the comment. Question two, this is his answer, this is the marking scheme. This is the common. Okay, and sometimes we make a uh, mistake also with the marking schemes, right? And then the student will come back uh, to us with the, with the comment, why this is three, why? And then we can change right away and it will be automatically updated to the students. Yay, we're done with grading quiz. And I have only three minutes <laughs> to, to cover uh, mixing the tools. So I think I have showed, uh, I have shown to you of ways of, um, of doing my assignments and quiz to cater to my need uh, as, uh, to teach the math course. So for example, in my uh, last semester class, I did all my assessments in the quiz platform. So assi assignment one is in the form of assignment uh, with uh, with annotated uh, feedback. The you can uh, upload the feedback files with grades. So I would download all the files and then <laughs> uh, annotate and then upload back. That's my assignment one. And my assignment two is a group work. So I would do um, marking guide, marking guide, yes, with CLO one and CLO, I don't remember. So group project. So I would do marking guide with CLO two and CLO three. And then I have um, assignment three is the same as assignment one, assignment four, same as assignment two. And then I have test two. Test two is in the form of quiz where they can upload the, the pictures and everything. And I also enable the camera. They have to turn on their webcam and then I can see the proctoring report for each uh, student. and uh, Moodle eLearn will also flag if there's any suspicious activity. So that's um, with online proctoring test test one, and then test two is the same as test one. Exam is also the same as test one. So for my My other class, uh, MAA 101, I did, uh, I have showed you before with the rubric, MAA 101 here. So I teach um, second part of the semester. Assignment two is in form of a video submission with rubric. We've seen this before. And then my 
my test one, uh, my test two is the same as test one um, that I showed you before with the feedback and everything. Final exam is the same as test one and test two. So we have all the tools and we can mix and match according to our need. So any final questions or comment from anybody? So we have the attendance link posted uh, in the chat. So if you have any question that you want to contact me personally. Um, hey, hello, Milo. You can contact me. Uh, just a second. My email here. My first name, Nornadia at usm.my. You can also uh, ping me through Microsoft Teams. You can also email me. If there's anything so yep there's no question uh, thank you very much i apologize if uh, i went too fast or anything um, uh, yes <laughs> uh, have a good experience teaching and grading and setting up assignments and quiz for this semester thank you very much thank you for your attention welcome welcome have a good day assalamu alaikum